Hey, are you new to Final Cut Pro or maybe you've been using Final Cut Pro for a while but you're still asking yourself, how do I reduce those file sizes that are huge? And how should I be storing my libraries? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that, at least how I do that, and you're welcome to join me in that video starting right now. Woo! Action! Hey everybody, my name is Sean Seymour and I do videos about how to with technology and photography. Sometimes it's cool stuff, sometimes it's frustrating stuff, and hopefully you get something out of it at the end of the video. I'm gonna show you in this video not only how to structure your Final Cut Pro libraries, but also how to reduce those file sizes. What files do you need to keep, and what files can you get rid of without it jeopardizing your ability to go back into that library and make edits later on. So let's go ahead and hop on the computer right now, and I'll show you exactly what I do in order to reduce my file sizes and keep my storage from filling up with giant size Final Cut libraries. First thing I want to show you is I'll pop open a finder window here and we'll go over to SSD drive which is a one terabyte SSD drive that I've named SSD video and you can see over here in my Final Cut libraries if I go down to my most recent project it's got 137 gigabytes. Now my last project before that, or the project before that, is only 98 megabytes. There's a huge difference between 98 megabytes and 133 gigabytes. Let's go to another unfinished project that I've been working on. Wow, look at that, 206 gigabytes. Now if I'm using a one terabyte SSD drive, you can imagine that I maybe can get four libraries on my drive before I'm gonna have to figure something out, right? I don't wanna have to do that. I wanna keep most of my libraries for the the whole year in one place. So how do I do that? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is open up Final Cut. And this is the last project that we were just talking about. There's not a ton of things going on here, but there's enough to occupy 130 gigabytes. So how do I take care of that? Let's hop up to the library. Now that I'm on the library, I can go ahead and click on File and I drop down to delete generated library files. You're gonna to wanna to click on delete render files, go ahead and click on all, delete any optimized media and delete proxy media. Now I know what you're saying to yourself, are you really telling me to delete my whole project, my whole library? And no, I'm not. What we're doing is we're actually just deleting the rendered files that were created by Final Cut when you were editing your project. So we're going to delete those because they take up a lot of space and you don't really need them after you're done and you've already exported or published your video. Let's say you want to come back at a later date and make some edits to that published video or maybe like I am, you're not done with the video. Well, where does that leave you? All you need to do is make sure that Final Cut has access to whatever files it used to initially create the project and it will go ahead and it will re-render all of those files for you. By the way, if you're running into slowdowns with Final Cut or you're running across screens where some of your plugins are not working, this is also a good way to get rid of any corrupted rendered files so that you can clean out Final Cut and go ahead and let it re-render your project. So you're really not deleting anything here that you need as long as you don't delete the original files and as long as Final Cut can still link to those original files to create its new rendered files. Make sure you click on all or it'll only delete the unused and then delete optimized media and delete any proxies you may have. After you click OK, it'll take a quick second, and then you'll see up here in the top left-hand corner, Final Cut's gonna start trying to render those files again, especially if you don't have background rendering turned off. So if you were to leave it here, it's just going to recreate all those files and then chew up a bunch of your storage. So what I do is I go ahead and I pause the background rendering, and then I make sure that I delete all the generated library files. I'll go ahead and just do it again, and I hit OK. Now you see background rendering's not happening. Go ahead and close Final Cut. Now the next time you open this library, Final Cut is automatically going to try and regenerate those rendered files. So that's how you can edit this at a later date and not have to worry right now about deleting the files that Final Cut created in order to 
create your project. And we should see that that library has been reduced to a reasonable storage size. 460 megabytes is fine with me. When you're doing this, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. Keep all of your library files on your fastest drive. Also, when you're deleting those rendered files that Final Cut creates when you're editing, make sure that instead of clicking just on your event, you're also clicking on the library before you go to file and go down to delete generated library files. Hey, if you got something out of this video, please hit that like button down below and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Also, that bell notification will go ding dong and give you a notification when I have a new video that comes out. And in the meantime, please make lots of content with Final Cut, but don't use lots of storage to do it. And until I see you on the next video, keep it simple, my friend. Man, someone is cooking some stinky ass fish around here somewhere. Holy Christ. Oh well, too old to worry about it. Woo!